Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Creator for the Creator. Today we're going to be concluding the small series that I began about three or four weeks ago on what it means to be born again. Like Jesus said in John chapter 3 verse 3 whenever he was talking to Nicodemus he said you must be born again to enter or see the kingdom of heaven. So in the other two videos, we talked about why someone must be born again, the meaning of what it means to be born again, um, and then how someone is born again, and in what ways people are born again. And so I just encourage you to go back and watch those two videos if you haven't watched them yet. Um, but today we're going to be talking about um, the character of someone who has been born again and what marks or evidences a born again believer should show to be able to tell if they have been born again. So one of the best books in the New Testament that helps us to understand whether or not we have been born again is the first epistle of John. So it's not the gospel according to John, but it's 1 John, and it's later on in the New Testament. And this book really gives us a lot of insight into what it means to be born again and how we can reassure ourselves whether or not we have, in fact, been born again of the Spirit. So today we're going to be talking about those things. But to begin, I'd like to start by reading from the book of Hebrews, and this is chapter 10 verses 15 through 17 and it says and also the holy spirit adds his testimony to us for having said this is the agreement that i will set up and conclude with them after those days says the lord i will imprint my laws upon their hearts and i will inscribe on their minds he then goes on to say, In their sins, in their law-breaking, I will remember no more. So I just wanted to read those scriptures because I feel that the new covenant kind of sums up what it means to be a born-again believer. And through the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ, we have salvation and justification for our sins that we've committed. But besides those things, we can assure our hearts and our conscience, consciousness that we have been born again by seeing the evidences and the work of the Holy Spirit in our own individual lives. So without the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you can assure yourself that there probably is not a Holy Spirit working. So the fruit of the spirit is described in galatians chapter 5 and they are love joy peace patience temperance gentleness goodness faithfulness and kindness so without the fruit of the holy spirit you can be assured that the holy spirit is probably not working in someone's life but that's just one evidence or one mark that we can see whether or not that we have been born again. Besides these things, as we've discussed in earlier episodes, to be born again means that you are no longer a natural or carnal man. You're no longer someone who lives by your flesh, but you are someone who has been changed into a new creature in Christ. You are concerned with the things of the Spirit, and you are let your spirit rule over your flesh. It's not your flesh that rules over your spirit any longer. And then also we know that Christ's people are, like it even says in the Bible, a peculiar treasure unto God. So likewise, here on earth, we are a peculiar people. We're peculiar in the way we talk, peculiar in the way we walk, peculiar in our action and deed, and these things show forth the character of God. There are also obvious evidences in a born-again believer that God has been working on that person. It may not mean that overnight, overnight that they're completely 
you know, from dark to light, but it is a, it could be a more gradual kind of thing, like a seed that is planted in the ground. And it slowly sprouts forth a small sprout and then it grows into something that's a little bit larger and puts out a leaf or two and then even larger and then eventually over time it might have a bloom and then after that it might get fruit and bear fruit and so in the same way a born again believer slowly grows up into Christ and this also can be known as the process of sanctification So it's not just that you're forgiven, but it's also that you're sanctified in Christ. And so likewise, believers over time, it's like, you know, leaven is being um, leavened throughout the whole lump slowly. So it takes time for these things to happen. But over time, you should be able to see some obvious evidences that God is moving in that person's life. Although not all born-again believers show forth the same amount of growth at the same time, we all are on different levels in our walk with Christ, and that's okay. That doesn't mean that, you know, that person is less saved than someone else or anything like that. It just means that the Holy Spirit works on us in a very personal and individualized way, and for that I feel very thankful that He comes to us in very you know, personalized ways that we can relate to and we can understand. And so we each have our own walk with God. However, this is something that should be able to be distinguished completely from the world around us. You should be able to tell a believer from an unbeliever. So with the Holy Spirit, there is really no compromise. Although they are slowly growing up into a fully mature Christian from a baby Christian, you should still be able to tell the difference between the world and the Christian. And of this you can be sure that apart from the Spirit, there is no salvation. Apart from being born again, like Jesus says, you cannot enter or even see the kingdom of heaven. So this is incredibly crucial. There are plenty of people who, you know, go to church every week or even people who have been baptized that still have not been baptized in the Spirit. And so this is something that we must all completely understand in our hearts and our minds and, you know, pray about and be assured that we are saved, that we are born again in Christ. So even though being born again is a gradual thing that, you know, we grow up into Christ, that one seed that is planted whenever we are first born again is enough to make an entire whatever that plant is supposed to be become so whether it's you know supposed to become a big oak tree that grows and spreads its branches all over you know a certain area and shows forth fruit in the same way but it comes from this tiny seed in the same way we whenever we're born again have that seed within us to grow forth all the things we need to grow up into a full knowledge and understanding of who Jesus is. So now that I've described someone or the character of someone who has been born again, I'd like to describe eight different evidences or marks of someone who has the new birth. And to begin with, the very first two that I'm going to describe are the two foundations of the Christian character. So the other, the last six kind of flow out from these first two. So the very first two are crucial. You can't have the rest of the things without these very first two things. So the very number one thing, um, foundation in Christ that shows forth that that person is a born again believer is that they have forgiveness from sins and they flee from those sins so we must all have a conviction on our hearts that we can't do it alone that we need a savior so you understand that apart from being forgiven apart from turning from your sins apart from repentance there is no new birth so I'd like to read some scriptures from first John chapter 3 and this is verses 
three, uh, I'm sorry, First John chapter three, verse nine. And it says, no one born of God practices sin for God's nature abides in him and he cannot practice sinning because he is born of God. So this is incredibly important. That seems very clear to me that, you know, if you've been born of God, you have the Holy Ghost living within you and that seed will not allow you to continue to participate in sin. So for me personally, like I've always had a really big trouble with addiction, especially to cigarettes and marijuana, although there have been some other things in there as well. And although recently the Holy Spirit has delivered me from these things, but for me, like overcoming those things would not have been possible without the Holy Spirit. That's the only reason why I wanted to get rid of those things in my life, because as I continued to grow in my relationship with the Lord, every time I would practice those sins, it bothered me and it bothered me more and more to the point where I wanted to give it up. And the things that I used to delight in, you know, I now couldn't even really enjoy it all. And so I'm so thankful that the Lord put that desire on my heart to quit those things because I mean, even natural old self Maddie knew that those things were bad for me. But, you know, once I was born again, I understood on a spiritual, much deeper level, like those things, I was enslaved to those things and that it, I was practicing sin. And even Jesus himself said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And although there is no, you know, commandment that says, thou shall not smoke marijuana or thou shall not smoke cigarettes. Like there is a commandment that says you shall have no other gods before me. And in my mind, the Holy Spirit made it known to me that I was, you know, partaking in idolatry and that I put those things in place of God and that, you know, instead of going to God for my peace and really being still and resting in him, I was, you know, having a cigarette or smoking a blunt or whatever it might be. And so that was something that I started to catch on and realize as I was maturing, like, this isn't something I can hold on to. And it wasn't something I wanted to hold on to any longer. So for me, it was repenting, you know, from those things and not practicing those things anymore. But, you know, I don't want you to think that what I'm saying with these scriptures is that I'm perfect now and I'm this like perfect pure angel because I'm not. I still slip and stumble at times, like I said before. And, um, you know, I trust in the Lord to forgive me and to wash me of my sins whenever I do, but I don't go on practicing these things, you know. Part of being a disciple of Christ is picking up your cross and following him daily dying to yourself and putting away the desires of the flesh and living unto the spirit, you know, being dead to sin and being alive to God. And, you know, through the process of sanctification, he makes that something that's actually achievable. And honestly, I never thought that that was something that I could be delivered of, but he redeemed me from those things. And, um, you know, I'm not a slave to those sins anymore. And even though I might still have temptations from time to time, you know, it's just a whisper in my ear. It's just a lie that comes across my mind saying, oh, you should do this. You should, that would be good. You would, that would be so much easier if you did. <laughs> but I can easily say back, no, I don't want those things anymore. I don't do that anymore. And I don't need you. I don't need that <laughs> and I'm free from that and so that is the number one foundation of someone who has been born again is like that you are convicted of your old sins you're not practicing your sins anymore and you're turning from them and you know you're fleeing from them like I said this doesn't mean that we're perfectly perfect angels pure in everything that we do like it just means that you know like it says here in first john 1 8 
If we say we have no sin, the truth is not in us. Oh, I'm sorry. If we say we have no sin, we delude and lead ourselves astray, and the truth is not in us. But if we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we contradict his word and make him out to be false and a liar, and his word is not in us. And, you know, I'm really thankful for those scriptures and like especially this parable that Jesus tells in Luke chapter 18 and he compares the prayer of two different kinds of believers one of them is a Pharisee the other one is a tax collector and the Pharisee goes up it's actually prayers of these two different people that he compares to show forth um, who was more justified and the Pharisee goes up you know, and lifts his head up to heaven and says, thank you, Lord, that I am not like the other men, not like this tax collector. And I tithe in everything I do. And I'm great at this, that, and the other. And, um, then it, Jesus tells the story about the tax collector's prayer and about how he could not even lift his head to heaven. And he just says, father, have mercy on me, a sinner. And then Jesus says, who do you think went home more justified? And he proceeds to tell the disciples, I believe is who he was talking to, that the tax collector went home more justified because he understood his sin. He understood, you know, the depravity of his own heart. And he confessed his sins and he trusted in the Lord to have mercy upon him and to cleanse him from all his unrighteousness. So in the same way, born again believers trust that God can um, be our right, be our righteousness and cleanse us from the things that we shouldn't be doing, but we don't practice the things that we used to do. We put off our old self and we put on Christ instead. Being a born again believer means that you delight in the law. You see the law of God in a new light. You put yourself up next to it and you realize that you can't keep this law, that you can't live a perfect life and that you have to trust fully in the sacrifice that Jesus was on the cross when he laid down his life for us. And you also learn how to judge sin differently than you did beforehand. You don't judge sin according to the ways of this world and what the world says is wrong and is right, but you judge sin righteously according to what the Bible says, according to the law that is written upon our hearts. And someone who is born again, like I said, feels conviction whenever we do commit sin. You might feel, you know, deep shame and guilt. And it that's exactly, you know, what Paul talks about whenever he says, but you felt a godly guilt that brought you forth unto repentance. Whereas um, worldly depression just brings forth death. And so there's a difference in um, biblical sadness, being sad in the spirit and feeling guilty and, you know, bringing to God a contrite spirit and a broken spirit and compared to like worldly depression that has no hope and um, doesn't look to God for forgiveness. So those are some things that um, describe what it means to be a born again believer, looking to God for forgiveness, but also being at battle with your sin, being at war, spiritual warfare with the devil and overcoming the sin and not practicing sin anymore, but um, desiring to do the will of God and to walk in his ways and to be obedient to him. Because, like I said, Jesus said himself, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. The second foundation of a true Christian who's been born again is that of someone who has complete faith in the crucified Christ. And what I mean by that is not just some like light, you know, I believe he did this and but it is a full wholehearted trust in putting all of your eggs in his basket, like they might say. But um, it's someone who knows that they have no righteousness apart from Jesus, knows that they need a savior, knows that, that they would have no hope at all without Christ. 
This is someone who counts on Christ for their salvation completely and for their justification. This is someone who understands their unworthiness to enter the kingdom of God apart from Christ and his blood. And someone who leans fully on the promises of God. This is also someone who completely embraces Christ in their heart, in their mind, in their strength, and with their whole self. And someone who looks not to themselves, but to Christ for their worthiness. And it's someone who is comforted by the fact that Jesus died for sinners. People like me, people like you, people who understand that apart from him, we are nothing and can do nothing. This is a person who is not ashamed of their weaknesses, but boasts all the more in their weaknesses because God's power is shown in our weaknesses. This is someone who is not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but stands forth and tells others about Jesus, knowing that whenever we confess Jesus in front of others, he also will confess us in front of the Father. And the most notable mark of someone who has placed their faith completely in the crucified Christ is someone who goes to Jesus for everything. You know, instead of picking up your phone and calling a friend or calling whoever whenever something bad happens to you or whenever you just need to let loose or whatever it is, you pray, you talk to God, you let it all out. Like I have, you know, journals and things where I just sit there and especially on really hard days where I just journal things and tell Jesus, you know, everything that's in my heart and I just pour my heart out to him, like knowing it's completely imperfect, but counting on him wholeheartedly to pick up, pick me up and to be, you know, my righteousness and to um, preserve me for kingdom come. So that is the most obvious um, evidence that a born again believer um, does that a born again believer has been born of the Holy Spirit because they do go to God for everything they count on him for everything and they look to him for everything and in every circumstance so fleeing from sin and having faith in the crucified Christ are the two top foundation um characteristics of someone who has been born again and I'd like to continue on with six more that I'll talk shortly about um, characteristics of someone who has been born again and these last six flow out of those first two so the first one I'd like to discuss or the third characteristic is holiness so in Matthew chapter 5 um, the Sermon on the Mount Jesus like I've talked about before, talks about these blessings. And he, one of the ones that he speaks about is blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. So someone who seeks the holiness of God understands that, first off, God is holy and that we must seek peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see God. That scripture always stood out to me so much because I want to see God one day, you know, there's nothing here on earth and nothing in heaven for us apart really from being reunited with the Lord. And so it is incredibly important for us to be holy, like our God is holy, like it says throughout the entire Old Testament and the New Testament. So being holy is someone who instead of practicing sin, you practice righteousness and also in the book of first john chapter 3 verse 7 it talks about this very thing where it says but let no one deceive you and lead you astray he who practices righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous so we must we must strive for righteousness and strive for holiness because these are the things that will help us to grow up into the, the maturity of Christ. Someone who is holy is someone who delights in the law of God and they yield their body um, 
as a living sacrifice unto God and they glorify God with their life, with their body, with their mind, in their thoughts, in their actions, and also in their words. And, you know, this is something that slowly became more and more important to me as I began to grow in Christ, and still am growing in Christ. And this is something like we will always practice, you know, is righteousness. Um, and I think that that's something that's really crucial. Like it's called the Holy Ghost for a reason. It's he's holy. And if the Holy Spirit is living within you, he will continue to make you more like him and make you holy. The next characteristic or attribute of someone who has been born again is spiritual mindedness. So in Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 through 3, it says, If then you have been raised with Christ, aim at and seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God and set your minds and keep them set on what is above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So someone who's been born again constantly is reminded that earth is not our home, that our home is in heaven, and that we are just sojourners or pilgrims or, you know, temporary living here on earth, and that our true home, our true desire is to be with God, with Christ in heaven because that's where our life is that's where our joy and our treasure is hidden and in the same way we toil for the things for the food that does not perish we toil for um, eternal treasure this person is someone who sets their mind on the things of the spirit and not on the things of the flesh They prioritize eternal treasure and eternal concerns over earthly, temporary, fleshly concerns. Another characteristic of someone who has been born a God is someone who has been victorious over this world. This has got to be one of my favorite ones for sure because, well, let me just read this scripture from 1 John chapter 5, and this is verses 1 through 5. It says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is a born-again child of God, and everyone who loves the Father also loves the one born of him. By this we come to know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commands. For the love of God is this, that we do his commands, and these orders of his are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God is victorious over the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, even our faith. Who is it that is victorious over the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? So this is someone who is free from the cares and concerns and opinions and thoughts of this world. Someone who prioritizes pleasing God and obeying God over pleasing the world and pleasing man. This is someone who's not led by the world or led by the trends and the things that the world cares about, but they're led by Jesus and they constantly keep their eyes set on Jesus. Like I said, this is someone that you can certainly distinguish apart from the world. They are peculiar for a reason, and that's because they have been victorious over the world through their faith in Christ. The sixth characteristic of someone who has been born again or born of the Spirit is someone who has meekness, someone who is humble. And like Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter 18, this is someone who has become like a child, they have humbled themselves like a little child, repenting, trusting, and humbling themselves under the mighty hand of God. This is someone who Jesus compares to the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. This is someone who understands their sin, who understands, like the tax collector from Luke chapter 18, that we are grievous sinners and that we need Jesus to be our um, atoning sacrifice. This is someone who offers up a contrite and broken spirit as their sacrifice unto God. 
in opposition to meekness is pride. Pride is one of the biggest sins that mankind can commit. Even Satan in his pride fell from heaven because he would not, he, if you go and read in Isaiah 14, he exalted himself above all things and, you know, became prideful because of how beautiful he was and being meek, being humble is something that it checks us, you know, it keeps us in our place and it helps us to understand our need for a savior and that we have no righteousness apart from Christ and his blood and his sacrifice. So this is someone who understands that, you know, I am the chief of all sinners and I can't do this on my own. I can't do anything apart from God. And they look to him for those things. The seventh characteristic of a Christian who has been born again is someone who delights in the grace of God. You know, in Psalm chapter 84, verse 10, David talks about how it is better to spend a day in his courts. It's better to be a housekeeper or a doorkeeper in the house of his God than to be in the tents of wicked and evil men. And in the same way, someone who delights in grace delights in becoming more like God and less like ourselves. Like John the Baptist talks about in the gospel according to John, that I must decrease and he must increase. In the same way, someone who has been born again delights in the word of God. They delight to know more about God and to grow up into the full knowledge of Jesus. This is someone who sees the reality that is present in the word and someone who seeks to grow in all things, especially wisdom. And the eighth and final characteristic of a Christian who has been born again is that you love others. So in 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 through 11, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and he who loves is begotten of God and is coming to know and understand God. He who does not love has not become acquainted with God, for God is love. And this, the love of God, has or was made manifest, where we are concerned, in that God sent his Son the only begotten or unique son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. So like Jesus said, this is someone who loves their neighbor as their self. This is someone who treats others the way that Jesus would treat them. And this is someone who desires that all people be reconciled to Christ because you've seen what Christ has done in your own life, freeing you from your sin, helping you to grow in wisdom and understanding and overcoming the world. And you want that for others also. This is someone who lays down their own needs, their own wants, and carries their cross daily becoming the hands and the feet of Jesus, quenching not the spirit and loving others the way that Jesus would love them. So in conclusion, the two number one foundations of someone who has been born again is forgiveness and fleeing from sin and also faith in the crucified Christ as your justification and your salvation. There can be no pardon of sins without purity you must repent and go and sin no more. It's something that we all must ask ourselves and look closer at our own ways, our own hearts, and ask God to make us more like him, to make us holy, to help us to grow into all things, and to help us in our unbelief. So I ask you today, have you been born again? Have you changed from a natural and carnal person to a spiritual and heavenly minded person do you look to jesus for all things and do you count on him for all things do you yield your body 
your thoughts, your words, and all of your actions up to God to glorify him in your life. To Whenever people look at you, do they see Jesus? And is your relationship with God worth more to you than religion? Because we can't save ourselves and we're not justified based on our own works, but we're justified based on Christ and what he has already done for us. So I just want to encourage everyone today to press on and to not let your lamp go out. Don't become cold like it says unbelievers will become in the latter days, but let the love of God continue to grow in your hearts and praise him for everything that he's done for us. Ask him to help you overcome sin in the Holy Spirit and ask him to sanctify you in truth because he will. If he's done it for me, if he can do it for someone like me, he can do it for you. And although he continues to work on us for our entire lives and will constantly have to put down our pride and constantly have to humble ourselves, I'd rather be with the Lord, learning from him, being humbled by him and disciplined by him and accepted by him than being rejected and falling away from him and turning away from him. Thank you all so much for watching today. And I just pray right now that each one of you would search your minds and your hearts and that the Lord would reveal to all of you, including myself, the ways that we can become and grow more in him. God bless you all and have a great rest of your week.